He's the most important footballer in Germany's history. A world champion, both as a player and a manager. A two-time Ballon d'Or winner. And he's a defender? If you've never seen the greatness of Franz Beckenbauer's game, you have to watch this. Franz Anton Beckenbauer was born on September 11, 1945 in the heart of post-war Munich. He began kicking a ball with intent at the age of nine, much to the dismay of his hard-working father. But Beckenbauer's origins are completely misleading for the figure he would become years later. Young Franz's original position on the pitch was that of a striker. He idolized Kaiserslautern's attacking midfielder Fritz Volta, a prolific goal scorer who led Germany to a World Cup in 1954. And as if that wasn't shocking enough, Beckenbauer started his youth career at SC Munich with the dream of one day making it at the club of his heart, 1860 Munich. Yes, Bayern's city rivals. At the time, 1860 was the force in town. But fate would have it that in a regional youth tournament, Beckenbauer's team clashed with 1860 in the final, and the match ended in an all-out brawl. That's when Franz decided to change allegiances out of spite and join Bayern in Germany's second division. Beckenbauer's debut came in 1964, and in the next four years, his career and his club reached all-time heights, winning the promotion to the Bundesliga, the German Cup, and the European Cup Winners' Cup. By 1968, Franz was already the team captain and Bayern Munich had won their first league title. Yes, you heard that right, Bayern Munich's first Bundesliga. Bayern Munich became the powerhouse we know today thanks to legends like Franz Beckenbauer. Together, they won four Bundesliga titles, three of them in a row, four German Cups, three European Cups, the equivalent of the Champions League in 1974, 75, and 76 and the club world title in 1976 against Brazilian side Cruzeiro. This literally transformed the Munich club, who went from zero to absolute heroes. What happened in those years was one of football's greatest ever transformations, in which Franz Beckenbauer became Der Kaiser, the emperor of football. Debuting as a left winger, Beckenbauer played his first season at Bayern and the German national team as an attacking midfielder. Beckenbauer's career at the national team was legendary, starting as an advanced midfielder and moving his way back. To put his offensive game into perspective, the 1966 World Cup golden boot was Eusebio with nine goals. Beckenbauer was tied in third place with four goals. At 20 years old, Beckenbauer is already a leader. Teammates respect him, opponents fear him. He scored in all of Germany's crucial matches on their way to the World Cup final even beating Lev Yashin with a thunderstrike in the semifinals. But Germany's coach, Helmut Schön, was concerned about England star Bobby Charlton, so he sent out Beckenbauer to man-mark him. What they didn't know was that Sir Alf Ramsey had the opposite concern and sent out Charlton to man-mark Beckenbauer. The message he sent out was, don't even try it. Coming out to face me is a waste of your time. This turned out to be a mutual cancellation, but it also showed Beckenbauer's ability to play a defensive role. The libero was a role invented, as the name suggests, by the Italians. A last man, free at the back to sweep up lost balls. A final resort. Beckenbauer redefined the position with his incredible reading of the game. His athleticism and physicality, but mostly his impressive technical skills on the ball. In the air, Beckenbauer found himself outside his element. But when the ball was on the ground, it was his game. This was a sweeper who could defend close down and regain possession, but also pick up the ball and move it forward from the back. Beckenbauer dropped to a cave of his own, and from there, with the entire pitch at his disposal, he dictated the game. He could pass, run, dribble, and shoot. He was the engine of his teams and the perfect captain. With Germany, Beckenbauer finished as runners-up to England in his debut World Cup. The following one in Mexico would see them lose in the semifinals to Italy in what's been labeled the game of the century. Beckenbauer dislocated his shoulder, and Germany had already used their two substitutions. So he stayed on the field, his arm in a sling. Germany lost in extra time, but won the third place match against Uruguay. In 1974, after crowning themselves as European champions in 1972, Der Kaiser and Germany were not about to lose another World Cup. 
West Germany became the only team capable of stopping the clockwork orange of the Netherlands, with Beckenbauer nullifying Johan Cruyff. He became the first captain to lift the new World Cup trophy. Beckenbauer's international career ended in 1977, a year after losing the 1976 Euro final on penalties to Czechoslovakia. This means that, as a player, Beckenbauer never stepped down from the podium at the international level throughout his entire career. It's hard to believe. His astounding club and country footballing level led to a long individual awards list, voted Germany's Footballer of the Year four times. A part of FIFA's World Cup team in all three tournaments, he was involved and in the Bundesliga's Team of the Year throughout his entire career. But Beckenbauer's biggest individual prize was the Ballon d'Or. Beckenbauer won it in 72 and 76 and was in the top three another three times. His career as a professional footballer came to an end after four seasons in the NASL, representing the New York Cosmos. But before hanging up his boots, Franz chose to return to the Bundesliga, this time with Hamburg, and won another league title. The final numbers show a unique libero who played 754 matches, scoring 98 goals. With the national team, he was capped 103 times and scored 14 goals, mostly from his impressive long-range shots. Beckenbauer's impact on and off the pitch was so big, when he retired, Andy Warhol presented him with an original artwork. But his legacy stayed on the pitch. The role of the playmaking libero is one that Germany made their own. It was continued by the great Lothar Matthäus, who played in a record five World Cups, starting as a playmaker and ending as a piece of the defense. Nowadays, the role has been reinvented by players like Joshua Kimmich. Beckenbauer's influence also stretched outside of the pitch, with Adidas signing him as their talent. The German brand wanted to move into the clothing market and made a two-piece tracksuit to be sponsored by Franz. Yes, THE Adidas tracksuit, which, if you didn't know, is called the Beckenbauer. Once retired from football, there was only one thing a Kaiser could do – become a manager. His first job came as the head coach of his beloved West Germany in 1984. Coaching in two World Cups, he made it to both finals and played a classic rivalry against Carlos Bilardo and Diego Maradona's Argentina. The Mexican affair ended in defeat, but the Italian summer was for the Germans. Germany was, once more, world champions, as they had been in 1974 with Beckenbauer as their captain. This only goes to show the inexplicable link between the glory of German football and the figure of Franz Beckenbauer a footballing nation that refuses individual acknowledgments in favor of die Mannschaft. The team spirit, its unity, more important than a collection of individual talents. Beckenbauer didn't set out to be the best footballer in Germany's history, he just was. His undeniable talent, natural leadership, and undeniable winning aura made him the greatest legend of the four-time world champions. And even though he cheated, reconverting himself from an attacking midfielder to a libero, He's undoubtedly the greatest defender of all time. Der Kaiser is a type of footballer that hasn't been around ever since. There's some of him in Virgil van Dijk, some in Sergio Ramos. You could even recognize some traits in Puyo, Terry, or Maldini, but also Gerard, Pirlo, and Michael Ballack. And that description alone should tell you just how big Franz Beckenbauer was as a footballer.